You're looking for facial expression and body language. Remaining focused on the person because that's quite difficult too because you know, sometimes you start thinking of other things and then you forget that you're lip reading. Probably them and turning away. Um, either because they don't know I'm trying to lip read or they don't understand it what I mean. It can be frustrating in a group trying to hone in on the different conversations. So is that so a, a meter or two? Yes. Yes. Oh, two meters is a good distance to be able to see company. If they're too far away, then you What did you think of the um, the acting? Because it was like people we didn't know before. They're not really sort of they're not Hollywood people or people that we've seen on the screen a lot. So did you? Yeah. Oh, sorry. The acting. Did, did you enjoy? Yeah. 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 It was well acted. Yeah. 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 Lit reading a noisy place. It's always a bit of a, a struggle. I mean, I find that when I'm in that kind of situation, I, I have to focus a conversation on one person. It's very hard to have group conversations. Noise behind me or different distractions in the class can, can be difficult. Remaining focused on the person because that's quite difficult too because you know, sometimes you start thinking of other things and then you forget that you're lip reading and then you've all of a sudden missed two or three sentences or something like that. You have to really concentrate. Sometimes, like when I'm in a noisy place, I just pretend to hear what they've said and then I say, I think I can't actually too much music here, go out best way because if, if they're going to ask it like certain questions you might say yes to something when you're not meant to be saying yes really. I try and steer a group to a quieter place where there's less background noise where the lighting's good etc because otherwise it can be it can be frustrating in a group trying to hone in on the different conversations. I'm going to go to Sydney first to see family. Sorry. Sydney, Sydney to see family. Oh right. Yeah. Yeah. In family. Yeah. Well, your relatives. Yeah. Family. Yeah. 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 Don't read like this because it makes it very difficult. So people with too much, trying to put too much expression into their mouth, it's very difficult to, because you all of a sudden you get so distracted by their lip movements, you don't, you, you forget what you're trying to be focusing on. When somebody exaggerates, it makes it really difficult to lip read because it's not the normal pace of um, speech. I find it easier to lip read somebody at a normal speaking rate because that's what you're used to seeing. If you're really struggling with a particular word then sometimes it helps if people repeat parts of the sentence and then sometimes if they really enunciate on particular words or try and rephrase things and that definitely helps. People try too hard to make it easy for you to lip read and actually the harder they try the more difficult it is. So it was also um, people that are easy to lip read is quite natural. Um, speaking also as opposed to over exaggeration of everything. Hey! Hi! 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 Australia. I know, I can't wait. I was just telling Peter about it yeah. going off in... Oh God, it's a week. Hang on, hang on, hang on. The things that I find most irritating um, when I'm trying to lip read somebody is, is probably them turning away um, either because they don't know I'm trying to lip read or they don't understand what I need. So when I'm in the office and I ask somebody where something is they will reply it's over there and of course as soon as they've turned away I can't tell what they're saying. Oh my family's the worst for that one they'll talk to me from other rooms and um, I have got a clue what they're saying and What's your advantage sometimes? It's great, it's better if, you, if the person looks directly at you, also that they don't sort of speak with the rim of their mouth. People just move a lot and don't focus on you, and that's what you need if you have problems with hearing. You need somebody to concentrate on answering you, and people often don't. Right, I'm going to introduce the subject we, I want to talk about, yes. which is holidays. How many holidays do you get where you work? Um, 30 days. I'd say context is one of the most important things for lit reading. Knowing what you're talking about, you can fill in the gaps. So if you do miss something, you can think, oh, you know, that's what they were talking about a second ago. Or you can anticipate what they're going to say and it makes it a lot easier to lit read. Presenting the subject at the beginning is, and checking that you've, you've realised the subject at the beginning really helps with the rest of the conversation.
I mean, you obviously knew the story, but I mean, it, it was quite interesting to try and watch and see what they were saying. Yeah. And then, then I thought, I didn't realise because um, it was an English, <laughs> it was in English. Yeah. People that enunciate well and have a lot of lip movement um, are easier than people that mumble and uh, don't show a lot of expression when they talk. You go by the whole person, it's not just their mouth you're looking for facial expression and body language. Someone who's expressive, both with their, their facial uh, features, but also with their hands, all of that helps um, lip reading a lot, definitely. Far more people could be easier to understand than they are at the moment, just with a little extra thought. Um, concentrate on your speaker, look at them, um, give them a fair chance to, to look at your face and look at the shape that your lips are making and to get the rhythm and be in good light and be on the same level of, as you and don't turn away when they're talking to you. It's quite little things that make the biggest difference.